Oh my god! Simple CSGO is playing OE4! Okay, now that I have your attention, I don't know if it is, but... <laughs> He's got the right name for it. One and all, welcome back to the A4 Action. We are here for some team games live from the ladder. We've got some high rankers, in fact, in this. Most notably amongst this crew is got to be Maigo over here. Maigo, who we have seen as a prolific Zhuzhi spammer. They've taken games off the likes of Core in 1v1. Ranked 80th in the world in 1v1s right now. And in team ranked, they are 336th in the world. And well, whether it's team or 1v1, they're always picking the Zhuzhi. Let's intro the teammates. The person who actually tipped me off about this game is Ran Siv Enjoy down here in the orange plane as the French. And then finally, we already introed Mr. Simple himself in the blue as the Mongols. Up to the north side, they're going to be up against the Ultramarines. Oh my god. Well, actually, in fairness, the, the writer that made them OP is gone. So maybe Ultramarines won't always win here. Uh, playing in the greens, HRE. Next to them is going to be Negris Ze Severu playing as the Mongols. And then finally, rounding us out, we've got Midorek in the teal playing as a ruse. So let's see if we can actually just like quickly do a glance over at the ranks. It looks like the rank hasn't come in because this game was literally just happening. Um, but Ultramarine, show me your ranks. Ultramarine is a top 400 player. Okay, so this, is, this should be a decent game then. I think everyone is like fairly high ranked. Yeah, seriously guys, this is a stacked lobby. Uh, we've got two Konks and a Diamond for the Northside team. And then Ran Siv and Joy is 801st in the world. Simple is diamond. So we've got two conks and a diamond on each team. This should be a pretty close game. All right, let's hit the speed up for the early game because obviously on big maps like this, we're not expecting much in the way of aggro play. In fact, most players I'm expecting to try and set up some TCs. Love the opening from Simple. Never keeping it simple. Actually goes in the horseman, but the counter play comes out from Negrisi. Able to kill off the villager and push that away. Well played from the central Mongol player to mirror the moves of simple and block it out. Meanwhile, he makes his moan on the other side of the map. Just trying to punish in here, but it looks like Rancive Enjoy is going to get the outpost up. Knights are there to block it. And oh my god, you filthy Zhuzhi spammer. Even with the nerfs, he has to find a way, doesn't he? Double stone, gold... And then the food. So that's going to be 36 food, 25 gold, and 50 stone. So overall, that's going to be, was that 111, did I say? Yeah, 111. Pretty darn good. Mongols are going to be a little bit annoying. They're going to keep kind of like running through here and idling out a little bit. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the map, let's see what tech choices are being made. We have the school cavalry, as is expected every time from the Rand Siv Enjoyer. It's going to be Silver Tree on the other side of this. Blue also mirroring that with Silver Tree of their own. Kremlin drop coming in from Teal. Not too surprised by that. Love the fact that they're using the Kremlin drop to actually go and farm. They set up a short wall here and they go for the deer. And the cool thing is when you look at their vision in this game, they're going to see plenty around them. So pretty freebie type move. And then finally, Ultramarine. Wait, what? What? You know you pick normal, normal HRE, right? Uh, Ultramarine making a, a choice I'd expect out of Oh, TD here. When for the mine work? Looks like they have added an extra prelates though, so it's not too bad, but okay, so it's still pretty bad. It doesn't feel good. Like you're literally building farms this early on in the game while going mine work. That's never a good sign. Not building well for the northern side team to open up on this. Meanwhile, the south side team, of course. Giga Chad on the Zhuzhi. Triple TC drop coming in. Double outpost already set up by Orange, just trying to make sure he can aggro and not defend. Unfortunately, it looks like they may be outnumbered, though. Four knights compared to the, what is that, six already coming out from the Ruse. So, bad start to the game for Orange here. Great start for Teal. Blue is going to try to push back the pressure coming in from Green. Hey, man, if you got mine work, you spam spears, right? That's the way it has to work. <laughs> Should we slow this down a little bit? There are actual raids going on. I'm curious what the builds are going to be. Who's going to be booming up? We've got Silver Tree plays, but not much in the way for trade of either side right now. In fact, it looks like everyone in the game is playing Feudal Aggression other than Maigo. Maigo is literally the only person who's going greed. And it might be a good thing, because right now, folks, these other fights are not going well. Teal still winning against Orange in Orange's own base. That's tough, man. That sh it feels like that shouldn't be happening, but it seems like Rand Siv Enjoy having to go into these outposts early on, setting back by two knights compared to Teal. And also, keep in mind the other awkward detail is Orange is playing on berries. Meanwhile, Teal was playing on deer. 
That is a phenomenal edge there. With the survival techniques, you're already ahead. 0 0.66 compared to 0 0.84, where deer are better. But then with survival techniques, it's like 50% better gathering rate for the roots. So no surprise there that Teal right now is dominating the night mass. So he's going to swarm on top of him as well. I love the fact that even with low HP knights, he's finding great trades. A one for one when your health bars are this low is really good. Second raid coming in. It's Keshix as well. Oh my god. Orange. I mean, Rand Sivinjoy, it's a good thing that you built three outposts because you're going to need all of them. Anyone who does not have a garrison spot is just dead. So locked at 30 villages. Great raid in here by Teal and Red. And I imagine they'll ripple through to another base soon because this, this has done everything it can here. Behind this, Ultramarine does reach up into Castlage with the Regnets. Yellow, they need Yellow's help soon, man. This is bad. This is really bad. I mean, it looks like they're just greening up, right? Up to 58 eco. If the raids seep over into their base, it's going to be a problem. But it looks like Spearmen are on the way to save the day. Perfect timing there as well to try and keep the villagers alive just when it was needed. Hope he's got enough spears for at home, though. Looks like he's prepping more Raxes. Has got Xiang Nan right, so he's going to get freebies alongside this. Granary is also being set up behind this by Yellow. Spears come out just in time. So Teal won't be able to get a freebie here. In fact, there should be a mirrored move to block out and protect over on the left side. Need more blue. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? In 2024? Magadai. Feudal Age Magadai. Uh, okay. I mean, they can kite the Keshix to a certain extent, right? So it's kind of working because Red is throwing away Keshix unnecessarily here. Looks like the raid on the other side into Yellow's base wasn't quite as effective as they would have liked. Teal had to just peel away. And Silver Tree has moved into the corner, but it's not doing much. Maigo, meanwhile, is doing a lot. It's time to go up. I imagine we are looking at a Mount Lu Academy here. Doesn't fill up the type of game where you have map control. Then again, with mass spears, you could technically brute force your way out onto Relics. I think that's exactly what they're doing, aren't they? Yep. Chal Wait, no, Mountain Lucan. Okay. <laughs> well, that was kind of underwhelming. I thought we might try to race green for these relics, but I guess if you're trying to pump that many spears, you're going to leave yourself very vulnerable, and the walls aren't up yet. So instead, they play it safe, they play it condensed. Mountain Lucan Academy, of course, is going to generate food from your taxes as well. It's so pretty beneficial. Especially considering you're only midway through the granary transition currently. And it feels like you're going to need a lot of men, men uh, manning the walls, rather, to protect you here. Magadai play. I actually can't believe it's working. He has got the Yam, right? So whenever he's defending at home, it's pretty good. Love the fact that Khan, I don't know if that was intentional, he tanked the entire charge there. So Giga Chad forehead means that the Keshik's done no damage to the Magadai. Now we're marching out to the mid map just as knights are arriving. This might be the point where we remember why Magadai don't get built. Because against Keshik's, it's actually pretty good, folks. Against Keshik's, Two damage is going through. We actually made that free because no range upgrades on the Keshix. But these knights, Green's already prepped for that. He's got the level two ranged upgrade courtesy of the mine work. So the Magadai guaranteed only ever doing one damage. Immortal does somehow still have knights in here. It looks like the wall was delayed on going up. Only one villager working on it. So a bit more idle time here, but I mean, my go at this stage should have plenty of spears, right? 15 few lay spears is enough to deal with this. Getting a few freebies. They ride underneath the TC. That feels like a mistake from Teal. I think it's better to just keep this open, maybe split this into two groups of knights and go north and south. Instead, they're going to run out, and I think that's the last time they're going to get in here. No age ups behind this either, right? If you look at resources, yeah, Teal is getting close, but... Not as quick or optimal as they'd like to be here. Love the fact that they've been playing out into the mid-map for resources, though. Just a great exploitation of their position in this game is to take resources away from your opponent's side. And also, it delays your own farm transition. And even after you get pushed back to your side of the map, there's all these deer still waiting behind your base. Keep drop on the way from my go, though. Green. Now arriving in the night. So, Blue might start to receive a bit of punishment for this all-in Magadai play. The thing that's kind of awkward about Magadai is they are great in a mid-map engagement in this situation, but when you're idled up in your base, your villages aren't protected, right? You don't have spears to hold a choke point. Do, however, have enough outposts, graciously done by Simple here. However, usually when you have enough outposts for your villages, it's not a good sign, right? 
In this case, it's mainly because he did actually spam up outposts, but you should be beyond 30 villages at this stage, right? If we look at Teal, by comparison, 51. So Symbol's definitely having a little bit of a hard time of it, down to 42. And if this little pocket eco ever gets scouted, the Knight's going to have a field day. <laughs> this looks so bad. It's just doing nothing. Okay, you need Castle Age. Like, like there's, there's no debate in this anymore. You genuinely need Castle Age, for the love of God. If it wasn't for Yam, he'd actually be dying. Simple. Oh, uh, no, 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 no! No, Yam! I guess you're right in the meeting Yams as well. That doesn't feel great. So many villagers just being sacrificed here. Simple, having a hard time. So... Orange, in the middle of trying to recover his own game, now can't provide support, right? So the French is just completely disabled in this game, right? They, they are out until they get back in, right? Which could easily take 10 minutes at this point. And of course you're going to wall them out. I mean, you, can, you have to protect something at this stage. Blue, right now, just has to be the vanguard on the wall. Problem with that is that it looks like the walls didn't go up quick enough. So the trade is now also in trouble. Okay, that's that's... That's not a very helpful wall, my go. That's going to be cruel. Oh, simple. Does find the resources to go for the tech up, but right now, a terrible time for it, right? You're about to lose the trade. And also, guess who's in trouble? You don't... Wait, is that Wheelbarrow? That does not look like Wheelbarrow at all. That looks so slow. Okay, even with Wheelbarrow, this just doesn't matter. Ran Sivenjoya, he's back where he started. This time, more TCs, but that means more villages to be squashed now. Keshik's not leaving anytime soon. In all the while behind this, Teal has teched up, right? High trade house in the back, 218 gold there. Green has been cast stage for a while. I believe they are at, what, five, maybe six relics? Yep, six coming in now. Red does need to catch up there. Red is the diamond level player. I believe the diamond level players in this game were red and blue. So both the Mongol picks. Everyone else is conk. I think they were reasonably matched, right? We said that my goes around like 300th right now in solo. And Teal on the other side is about the same. So a pretty fair matchup. But, oh, sorry, no. My mistake. My go is 300th in team ranked. He's 80th when it comes to solo. But then Orange was lower than Ultramune, if I remember correctly. So it sort of balances out. But then you have to remember, you know, Juji OP. Spear Brace comes in. Oh, just a bad fight. Spear Palace Guard versus Archers, Knights. It's just always going to favor Yellow here. Especially when you don't micro back. Teal just A clicks in. Great fight here. Yellow should be able to hold this back. More Spiminar on the way. Last of the Knights are falling now. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the map, it looks like Orange has been able to ride out with some assistance. So might be able to reclaim the base of blue. But there might not be much left of it. Green in with the crossbow Knights. Keshik's also coming in from red to burn down the outposts. I think blue's dead. I mean, this is just an awkward position to find yourself in now. Outpost going down, more villages to be sacrificed. TC already down to half HP. Simple is running out of time. He needs some assistance. The Magadai, they seem like they're effective, but what you have to remember is that if your opponent just dives onto the landmarks, it's not very effective at all, right? Like, this only works when your opponent gets baited to chase you. If he just stops and goes after the eco, it's GG. In fact, right now, even if he doesn't stop the chase after the eco, it feels like the Magadai just losing out. Even vetted up, it just doesn't feel like it's quick enough up against the seven armor of these knights, especially when they move away from the Cruel Tie. All the while behind this, Keshix. Knights just finishing off the infrastructure. A few villagers have pulled away, so Simple does have a way of recovering, but I think he needs to get on the wood and just start scaling into Morty TC. Like... It sounds so greedy in this position that I know, but what you have to remember is the alternative is you building what? Two or three Magadai, and that's it. I'd rather you try to come back 10 minutes from now than try to buy me more time in the interim because there's no time to be bought here. Walls awesome, also almost complete rather by Rand Steven Joy. Yeah, they're making good progress though. I love this approach by Maigo. Like his army's slow, right? The worst thing you can do right now is run to the right side to protect blue. The best thing you can do is trade against one of the stronger players of the Northern side team, one of the Castle Ages. It's like Teal did pump them Militia points. So Spearman will have to engage. Nesta Bees, a little bit exposed here. Nice surround to protect. 
And now the Nesta Bees can just attack on that range formation at the back. Spearman line spreads out perfectly here. Great micro by Mygo. Second Nesta Bees also arriving. Finally, the Knights reach in, but the price most definitely has been high for Teal. Militia did buy himself a little bit of a, a lifeline here, but the Nesta Bees still alive. I think Teal's in trouble. He needs some assistance right now. Military down to just 17. Red is rallying over here, but that means there's less pressure now coming to Blue's base. This is a cool move. Like, let, let this be a lesson to anyone who's trying to learn how to play team games. Sometimes reacting to the attack on your flank is the worst thing you can do. The better thing to do is apply pressure to your opponent's economy and then force their reinforcements to go there. Great move by Maiko. Orange does need to find a way of holding this, though. Right now, this is looking grim. Green moves in. Crossbows and Knights outnumbering their opponents. Magadite count now down to just, what, five? And Blue doesn't have a new TC yet. This is getting bad, folks. I go. Has a few spears to meet the Keshiks, so they will back away. Meanwhile, the raid in is effective. Teal down to just 51 eco. More soon to fall. Dude, this is kind of crazy, actually. Teal, he doesn't have anything to defend himself right now. He's trying to TC boom in the corner. On top of that, yellow is moving towards red space as well. He's overflowing. It is critical that orange keeps holding here, though. Right, never give up, never surrender. Even if you're just idled up, waste the time of green. Because yellow only has limited spearmen to defend with at home. Which creators just aren't really ever getting through, or they shouldn't be. Also, keep in mind, although orange looks like he's kind of dead, the guild hall is the, the variant that makes this interesting, right? It's like, if you're just static in your base, you can eventually reach Imperial. Speaking of which, guess who did? Yellow's up. And this should be, please tell me it's the Temple of the Sun. Oh, God, it's... Uh, I think Temple of the Sun makes so much more sense here. Looks like he wants to get advanced administration, though. So I guess he's running out of gold. If they had gold access, you should 100% be going for the Temple of the Sun for the movement speed. But it makes sense that with the Palace Guard spam, their upgrades, they don't have gold access right now, right? This is the last gold. So they need the advanced administration to afford everything extra. So kind of makes sense here. Teal just dead, though, man. The base is just gone. So although Yellow is two teammates down, he's removed one from the chessboard on the other side. I say that, he's 1.5 teammates down, right? Orange is kind of still existing. He is wasting a lot of green's time. Spring on placement also is clutch choice. Love that from Rancive Enjoyer. It's going to add a lot more damage in than the TC is ever capable of. And I don't think this is enough for green to kill this. Like, he's just going to start losing the army. More troops are being sent, but I think you needed rams on the front side. And yes, Shushi does have a Carl Slaves landmark, the Mount Lu Academy, that allows you to buff a bunch of different things for IOs, including tax giving food, which is the default thing you get, even without any upgrades. Farms now being built by Orange in Yellow's base. He's like, can I get the granary buff as well, please? And we're actually getting dynastic protectors. Yo! That's sick. I actually love that. This is Yuan Raiders. There's no way you're going for Imperial Guards here. Like, maybe eventually, but the goal should be Yuan Raiders because look at the map. Only one person is walled, and those walls haven't held on. So if you go for, like, 10, 20 Yuan Raiders here, think about the ramifications. So many villages waiting to be chopped. I don't mention the traders as well. Everything that you can shut down here. That's a sick read. I love to see it. So let's see if we are correct. Is it going to be Yuan Raiders? Stables haven't been prepped yet, right? Pago... <laughs> I mean, he's got 3,000 food a minute. The proxy pagodas. Oh my god. What a sick play. <laughs> now the IOs make sense. He needs the extra ones for this. Wow. What an idea. Shaolin Monk's now moving in. Straight into the heartlands of the Mongols. Idle time achieved. Monks pretty chunky at this stage. 210 HP. And they will know no peace until everything is dead. <laughs> Orange, meanwhile, moves far left side. Looks like he's going to try to get some castle defenses coming in. A raid does hit from the Keshiks, though. Yellow needs something at home here. 
Spearmen are being prepped. They are going to be elite Spearmen, so these Keshix will die fast. But a lot of idle time in the meantime, and my go, he needs to return favor here. Red. Going to feel the wrath and fury. Dive is going to be shut down towards the corner where Teal is now camped up, but this raid in, Green is struggling to turn it back. And Yellow, the mounting pressure is a bit worrisome for the Northern side team. The only person whose eco is uncontested right now is Green. And funnily enough, the damage they try to do to Yellow doesn't seem like it's good enough here. Keshix are trying to hang around wherever they can, but just a handful of Spearmen should be able to mop them up. Second wave is coming from Green, though. Needs to be fast about this. Where are the extra spears? It looks like Yellow is still rallying to the enemy base. So interesting, he doesn't actually add more into defense here. Kind of makes sense, right? Like if you lose five or 10 villages a minute, that's absolutely fine when you have free TC to rebolster. Spearmen are gonna need some assistance now that there's crossbows plus more knights. So once again, vacant farming area. But considering the damage he's doing in return, it feels worthwhile here. He's idling out red. No reinforcements coming to the raid. Orange is rebooming behind this. Now three TCs set up on the north side. And a red palace. Dude, I love this. Yes, random Steve Joya. Guild all pays its dues here. That's what I was waiting for. And I'm expecting a keep follow-up, right? I wanted to keep gathering on the stone because you need to keep drop the south side. Right now, the best thing you can do as orange is protect the eco. If you are able to protect Yellow's base, Yellow will win this from the center. Cool reads. Rams just now starting to flood through. My go. Has got a lot of idle eco down to 98. But it looks like the tide has been turned back. Green not raiding actively into Yellow's base anymore. Only one night. And damage most definitely down the other side. Red, what is he down to over here? Probably like, what, 20 traders? 16. I think he was up at like 35 at one stage. Like Teal has managed to reboom a slight army, but I mean, you're very limited here, right? You haven't done a full farm transition yet, so it's not like Teal can keep this up forever. Green is teching up there. Palace of Swiber on the way. And we have a calming moment here. How is Blue looking, by the way? They have got a TC being built. They were not able to rebuild the original, but they are moving the pastures over. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are red horsemen here. Imagine if you just started killing all the sheep. Orange getting some walls up. It's pretty helpful of him. Needs to rewall this area, really. I think, like, honestly, the TCs... I said keep drop. This is actually better. Remember, he's got red palace, so these TCs are discount keeps. And it means that Orange also has the ability to reboom while protecting the flank. So actually, I think, if anything, he should drop two more TCs. Just kind of insulate this entire area. If anything, drop a TC here, gather 2400 stone, and then TC spam along this line. It sounds meme but you've got to remember those crossbows are incredibly powerful against these raids. Look at it. 62 damage per strike. Obviously weaker on this, but 42. Still up against the knights, right? Knights have, at this stage, probably like eight armor. Yeah. They're going to get shotgun down. Teal. Spot orange. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, we, we might, we, we probably should have bought this. Oops. Well, Darbalus placements do help a little bit. In fairness, Teal, although he's going to get a TC here, I feel like these are even just a few losses. They're ones that he can't afford, right? Like, look at this. I love the focus file. That's great from Rand Sivinjoya. Take out the knights first, and then it's just archers remaining against this, right? I love the fact that this gold worker is still working here as well. I'm Honestly, if Orange repairs this, this isn't going down. Like, it's five torches left over. There we go. Comes in with clutch repair. Teal is noticing now, but the backstab. Nesta Bees. My go arrives just in the nick of time. The TC hold. Sick combo there. Shows you the power of these Arbiton placements as well. If it wasn't for those shotguns down from that crossbone placement, there would have been enough torches to finish this off. But instead, it stays alive. Barely. But barely still counts. Village is now being pulled. I think you need to repair this orange. Right now. Teal, he wants the gold. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get it here. Villagers able to repair it up just enough that it should survive this. Nesta bees need to move up, though. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Green being pressured. 
He decides to pressure back. Yellow at risk in the center of the map here with the Bombard. Should be good enough to hold this. The TC stays alive. Teal, all this effort and for nothing. 14 military and that is it. Raised in by red. Not going to be that effective though. TC line still needs to be bolstered by orange. I would love to just see him just follow up with what we talked about, right? Like, they should have enough stone to do this. Instead, they're focused on this corner. They've gone for keep drops instead. Makes sense, right? They are playing French. They need the keeps to get discounts on their units. And now, they're going to look to start fielding an army. In fairness, maybe these TCs weren't needed because right now, green has redirected all attention towards the center of the map. Red is a non-factor and teal is... Let's not talk about teal. Sick hold between the two, though. I feel like Simple is just along for the ride at this stage. In fairness, they bought a lot of time. <laughs> so, if this game goes hyper late, they're going to be reboomed as well. More TCs now being added in. Nesta B spam coming out there. What are we at? Eight here? Six. Six Nesta Bs, two Bombards. This is scary, actually. The other team doesn't have a solution right now because Teal can't get shot triggers, right? They're age three. An Ultramarine isn't really delivering what I'd expect here. You need to get Culverins, if anything. Instead, they have none. Bombards are overexposed, though, so it looks like they are going to get chased down. Nesta Bees also able to reach through green. I don't know how he managed that. Nesta Bees looking for the target on the range formation at the back. Won't be able to get it. But this chasing by green's melee is a costly one. Let's get two Nesta Bees in the end. The pushback continues the mash. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. He's getting absolutely handled here. Elite army tactics. All he's missing right now are the melee tech upgrades to get these monks up to their 225 damage. <laughs> these shallow monks are ridiculous, folks. The fact you can supervise pagodas is bonkers. There's just so many of them as well. And remember, if you're not fighting them, they're healing. That's what makes it worse, right? It's like after this fight. If you haven't finished them, this starts happening. Plus, 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 plus. <laughs> oh, no. Green. The worst type of comp to face. Men at arms don't work here. In fact, the only thing that does work is Mass Lang's Nectar, but Ultramarine, despite the fact they've got 2.2k gold, they never upgraded Langsk. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Orange, also just being a nuisance, actually finds their way into the eco of Teal. Trebs are trying to breach through the keys, so that's a slow process, and you're running out of time fast here. My go, he done in teal, he done in red. There's only one color left to his rainbow here. It's Ultra Me's turn. Oh my god, the shot. <laughs> they are so incredibly effective. Even outnumbered, they managed to take people with them. And the spear follow up should clear up the rest of this. Nesta is left behind with the Bombards to clear up anything behind them. My go, more like my way or the highway right now. I mean, he took, what, 20 plus minutes? But when he said it was his my go, he went for it. And good eyes there. He went for the Dynastic Protectors. He still hasn't actually used it at all. I think what happened here is he thought it was going to have to be Yuan Raiders. And then he realized that the armies of the North were quite weak, right? They weren't full stocked up. So instead of going for a unit that can't take direct fights, he just switched over to mass pagodas. Oh my god. I mean, the bees might be down, but I just don't think you care here. Shallow monks are going to win this. Look at his eco as well. <laughs> he can afford it. Looks like we got a little bit... Wait, what happened here? Did you not realize the farms were vacant? I think he switched over to wood for some reason. Temple of the Sun is in as well, by the way. So he has got the Divine Haste. <laughs> I love this unit. It's just absurd. Okay, foods are back online, right? So this should be going up to like 3k food easily. He has supervised on the Pagodas again. More of these monks are coming out. How do you, how do you deal with this? If you're the Northside team, probably like Kurotai and Manganels would be pretty effective here. They're just not doing it. Right, red. I mean, they're barely getting anything out. A lot of trade coming in at least, so maybe that could turn around soon. 91 gold each end isn't too bad. And 
right now. Sling's coming in. So yellow just trying to help people recover. Actually, wait. No. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, did red just bribe yellow to leave him alone? We we're on my go. And it just said that he received tribute from Negrisi Severu. Did he actually just bribe him? I mean, yellow's not attacking for the moment, so I, I think so, folks. Like, what on earth? <laughs> oh, uh, that's an interesting patchwork wall. <laughs> that's the bees are coming in, though. I don't think that's a good enough raid. Interesting point being raised about, like, green going arc instead. The counter argument is if he didn't have mine work, he wouldn't have had all the undermesh upgrades for the early time assault, right? So it's like, it's, it's trade offs. Late game, I think, yes, Arkin better, but that mid game timing, I would say the mine work did actually help them quite a bit. <laughs> I can't believe he got bribed by the enemy. Yellow, we'll just defend for the moment. Looks like red is in. I mean, the problem here is like, you, I don't think you can do enough damage. My go is at 120 eco. That's all he needs. If anything, you're about to free him of the constraints of population. Springles are now here at least. So finally they have a solution. Unfortunately, uh, the answer to everything in this game is Shaolin Monks with 25 damage every 0.75 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, the damage they're doing just feels irrelevant, right? Like, it's a little bit of a tickling, but it's never enough to put them down. Even Orange is back in this now. 125 eco. Meanwhile, simple. 54. If he ever recovers this, this is over. So right now, Yellow holding back everyone. Orange now arriving with the cavalry. That's what you love to see here, right? Much easier for them to strike in on the economy while the Shaolin Bonks take the main engagement. <laughs> Who wins? The Chivalrous or the Pietus? That's definitely the word. The Pietus man wins, guys. That's the answer. <laughs> How does a man with a walking stick beat the crap out of a knight? Like this. Exactly like this. <laughs> even, even with the unique mind work text, you don't have enough armor for this. Oh my god, it is falling apart. I... I'm not sure how you're meant to win if you're north now. Teal has good eco. Red has way too much eco. Okay, so there's your problem. Like, I'm scratching my head. It's like, they either don't have enough eco or something else is wrong. Red is 167 eco. That's a problem. I think you need Keshix, man. Oh, dude. It's just too much eco. I just... He's gone full trade. You never go full trade. 52. Good God. Green's trying to hold on for the team right now. They're like the last bastion of defense. If they go down, it's all going to fall apart. And now, with the combined forces of yellow and orange, I think this, this is the assault that might just bring an end to the reign of green. How many relics was it in the end? I think it's eight. Eight relics. And yet you still can't win. Make that seven. Seven relics, and yet it looks this grim. Raids right deeper. I mean, I don't remember the last time they took a bad trade. Orange now reaching into Red's base. If he peels back to that trade, I think this is all over. He's starting to sense something's not right. You can't quite see where they're going yet, but you can anticipate it. And these knights just so beefy with the biology, with the, the bloodlines rather, they just don't die fast, right? So they are going to scout it out. They're going to know just how much trade is going on here. Meanwhile, front side of it, green, getting pushed back further. The Nest of Bees is just uncontested now. This is the problem, right? The culverins, they don't exist for green. Right now, he's putting everything into meat shields, and the meat shields are just getting om nom down like they're up against King Kong himself. Teal trying to come in for a, a reprieve assault here. Starts diving the keep, but simple. Now, after all that has happened to them, after the start of this game, 
He's going to go to Imp. It took him a lot longer, mind you, but he made the way, right? He made the space, and now, now it is indeed their go. What an insane recovery here. Simple also now once again raiding in with the veteran Magadai. They don't seem that effective, but remember, once you reach to the backside, reach to that trade, these traders only have two ranged armor, so you can kill them off pretty fast. Teal also just taking blows here. What an insane game. Like, what an absolutely insane game. They were down to one, essentially, right? Like, blue turtled for a long time for the team. Orange barely was able to hold on. He scrapes back into the game off the corner and actually has relevant assaults here. And yellow, my go, all the way through. The anchor point they needed. The first 20 minutes left them to die. But for the last 20 minutes, all the enemy has known is death. Blue. Looks like the Magadai are going to mirror him out, so he's not going to be able to dent the trade. But I think the problem right now is the denting happening to Ultramarine's base. Houses are becoming a problem, folks. But I say that, you'd actually need to have enough population for them to be so. Production is also another issue, and green is running out of space. Not just that. Ran Sivenjoy is moving north side here, keeping Teal down. Combined arms are paying off. Magadai can also continue to be spammed out by blue, but it's going to be Carnet Palace, right? So just this trickling of troops, whether it's Knights or Magadai or even Horse Archers. Plenty that you can add in over time. Red now reacting. Streltsy might be able to help stabilize this a little bit, but it, it feels like there's just too many knights and spears. So Red also going to be forced to stand and lose out. And all the while, they just keep diving deeper. Yellow with the switch over the north side. Red now once again being dented here. Too much gold, not enough food it feels like. Nestabees are going to get protected at the last second. And the traders might be safe, but the villagers most definitely are not. Yellow, just kind of in cruise mode now, right? Like, never really running out of food. This game feels over. I, they're not going to surrender yet, right? Because they feel like maybe there's, there's one last blow to, to be struck here. One last opportunity, but... In fairness, my go now with the keep drop on their trade, all but guarantees this is over. <laughs> what an insane game. I mean, he's still a filthy Zhuji spammer, right? But credit where credit is due. This has been an incredible performance out of them. If anyone's wondering why they haven't cheated yet, it literally is because the trade hasn't been cut yet. The moment that trade is cut, you won't hang around anymore. Well, I'm going to hit the two times speed as much as the frame rate allows me. I know it's getting a little bit laggy. I don't know what it is, the optimization AOE. I really need a new PC, actually. Um, but this is kind of unrecoverable at this stage, right? If you look at the income, yeah. This food is not good enough for red. And yellow is just kind of out of control, right? Like, it's always the Shaolin Monks. I think the Shaolin Monks are just the spook factor of 10 here. Remember, the hardened body does work up against the hand cannon here. So right now, they're losing 17 damage per shot. Bombards are going to be exposed, but worth the trade, right? Lose three Bombards, kill 20 hand cannon here. Take that every day of the week. Meanwhile, the dives just keep getting deeper. Keep is at least going to get shut down, but it's done plenty of damage in the meantime. Ay, ay, ay. Blue now massing together the Magadai to remind them that he's back in the game. Some interesting points being raised about why they haven't GG'd out yet. I think they're about to be convinced to do so. Simple is up again to 103 eco. Almost 50 military to their name. They're about to join in. And that should be the decisive moment. Random Sivenjoy are also now sneaking up with discount keeps. Love to see. And this is a parking point. Once they get in here, I don't see them ever letting up, right? Like, just look at the amount of army, raw army coming in this area. Bombards to sweep through the base. Green, once again, lacking the army to stand up against this. Only 27 military. And Teal, I mean, most of their population. Yeah. 16 military. That is all. 
What a cool game. Dude, what an insane turnaround. Got to give so much credit to Maigo. Reminded that they are the highest ranked player in this lobby, but this lobby also includes top 800, top 400 conk players. Right? So these games, although they sometimes seem skewed when you hear that there's a top 100 solo ranked player in them, overall, ELO-wise, this was a phenomenally fairly balanced match. But still, Maigo, the infamous Yuji spammer, finds a way to make his non-ethical Civ slam dunk it in a 3v1. And finally, it is the turn of the north to give up. And my goes, well, he says it's my go to win. Crazy game. Let me know what you thought about this, guys. I think maybe one of our biggest comebacks in team games we've seen. I'd love to be able to cast more games like this frequently. If people do know about them, be sure to let me know. It's very hard to get good matchups in Team Ranked right now, but I am biting at the bit to see more of them, and I'll hopefully see you all in the next chapter.